Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to be investigating and trying ASMR for the first time. Oh, hold up, hold up. One quick thing before we get started though, I know there are some people out there who know what ASMR is and do not enjoy the whispering sounds. That's torture in some countries. So for all of you who are in that boat, the first half of this video will be full voiced and will have not that many ASMR sounds, but for people in the other camp who are here only for the ASMR, oh my god bitch, I'm turning this up. This is the timestamp that you can head to right now to watch and hear my attempt at an ASMR video. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, let's talk about what ASMR is. Just in case you have seen these letters floating around and don't know, ASMR stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response, which refers to the tingly and relaxing response that people can have to certain triggers. This feeling can range from a staticky or warm feeling in the back of your head to a chilly or goosebumpy feeling you can get when someone does that egg cracking thing on you. There's a knife in your back and my blood is gushing. Sleeping with Pam's mom, sometimes dinner. And essentially, ASMR videos on YouTube are trying to do to you what Dwight is doing to Michael here, just with audio and visual triggers through the screen. Hey boss. You seem tense. Triggers like whispering, tapping, breathing, chewing, painting, etc. Usually noises that are quiet and repetitive. And some people experience these tingles and some people don't. Now I'm sure most of you have seen at least one ASMR video around YouTube before, as it's been sort of moving into the mainstream recently, with many non-ASMR YouTubers making ASMR videos in the last few months. <laughs> Now, I am actually a frequent viewer of ASMR. I discovered the term back in 2014 when I was looking through Backstage.com, where there was a casting call for a YouTube channel called Quiet Cat ASMR, in which they were looking for a woman to dress up as a cat and pretend to do cat things like scratch a scratching post, meow, and purr softly. I did not choose to audition for this, but I searched up ASMR on YouTube, clicked on an ASMR makeup collection collection vanity tour, and the rest is history. Now, I use ASMR videos as kind of like an advanced white noise machine. I do get the tingles, but that's not always the primary reason why I watch. I like to play them in the background when I'm doing busy work, or writing a script for a video, or winding down to go to bed. That being said, I definitely don't know everything about ASMR, and I really don't know how to make an ASMR video besides the obvious, like, tap on things and don't scream. But I am very interested in trying it out. So to help me in my quest, I decided to seek out the advice of a real ASMR YouTuber who could show me the ropes, and then try and make an ASMR video of my own. Okay, let's do it. So this is GB, also known as GB ASMR, as you can tell by her finger fluttering that she was just <laughs> performing. So GB started her ASMR channel back in 2016, and she now has over 1.6 million subscribers and over 350 videos, which range from general trigger compilations to more intricate roleplay videos. Hello everybody, it's GB, if you can see me under all this hair. GB, thank you for coming. I have a lot of questions that I've written down on my phone. I'm ready to answer them. Great, amazing. All right, let's just jump right in, shall we? So GB discovered ASMR in 2010, back when the community was still in its early stages. I was watching like a massage video. I like stumbled into that realm and someone in the comments was talking about ASMR. I ended up Googling the term and it had its own Wikipedia page. And I was like, oh my God, like I've, experiences my whole life like as a little kid i remember feeling like the asmr tingles that they were talking about and i didn't know that it had a name i didn't know anyone else felt that so then i started looking up asmr videos and way back in the day it was actually called like the whisper community and i literally have not stopped watching them since mm -hmm. like every night now asmr as a feeling may actually have ancient origins it's not 100 percent proven but some people hypothesize that asmr could be evolutionarily related to bonding behaviors like 
grooming. Nonetheless, talking about ASMR is definitely new. People cite that it was first openly discussed online in 2007, in a thread on SteadyHealth.com titled, Weird Sensation Feels Good. And from there, forums were created, whispering videos were produced, and the term ASMR was coined. And while at first it was definitely classified as a weird sensation that feels good, since about 2014-ish, people have been talking about it in the public sphere more and more. I have this thing that I, that's a very real um, response. It's called ASMR. With W Magazine launching their Celebrities Try ASMR series. Hello, I'm Jake. ASMR Gyllenhaal. And brands like Lush and Ikea using ASMR in their sponsorships and advertisements. It's been very quickly a thing that none of us used to talk about it at all. It was kind of embarrassing, mm -hmm. you know, because you're like, mm, I don't know how to explain this, so I'm just gonna not. But now kids know about it. It was on like Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel. Shoot, I don't remember which one. One of the Jimmys. So ASMR, and this yes. is it's supposed to do what? Now, one of my theories as to why ASMR has become more mainstream recently is the huge popularity of oddly satisfying videos, like slime mixing, kinetic sand cutting, and just like generally squishing stuff. And although these videos are not all necessarily ASMR, they are kind of like gateway ASMR. Oh, take it out, squeeze it out. Oh, it's gonna come out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love ASMR videos, so that kind of like, same kind of feeling. Regardless of how it's become so popular though, with the attention has come a lot of opinions. What misconceptions do people have about ASMR that frustrate you as an ASMRtist? Mm -hmm. There's two. The first one is that people say it's a fad and I just have to point them to the fact that like it's been on YouTube for eight plus years. You know, people are falling asleep to ASMR every night. And then the other thing, people usually assume offhand that it's sexual. Is this sexual? <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying sounds sexual to me. They see something that, you know, is weird or whatever, they just like brush it off as that's definitely a sex thing. Admittedly, the case for ASMR is not a sex thing isn't helped by the fact that when it was first described online, it was consistently referred to as a brain orgasm. But according to a recent study, less than 10% of participants reported feeling aroused after watching ASMR videos. To be fair, ASMR can be intimate, though in a different way, as some people link ASMR feelings to caring and nurturing triggers that are often experienced in infancy, with the idea that ASMR is kind of like what a baby feels when it's being soothed by its parent, or what a cat feels when it's being pet. I'm sure Freud would have a field day with that, but I think it's supposed to be like an instinctual feeling of being cared for. Are you interested in like the science behind it at all? Like, are you interested in like doing science? Yes. Overall, ASMR science is still in its early stages. A lot of recent studies are just out to prove that it's real and what biologically is happening when you experience it. But a lot of people note that they actively use ASMR videos as a way to treat their stress, anxiety, and insomnia. There was a study, the University of Sheffield hmm. played my videos and another artist called Whispers Red. They played our videos to people and they studied their brain. They definitely saw a real physical response, like a relaxation. So people who experience this feeling aren't just making it up, it's a real response. Which really helps like our cause, you know, like when people are like, this is just a fad, this is weird, this is X, Y, Z. It's really nice to be able to point to studies. So the more people that do it, like we're very excited about anything that comes up. Okay, so now that we've covered a lot about ASMR as a sensation, I wanted to talk about how to make ASMR content, as I still have to do that. So like, what would you consider to be good ASMR, if that makes sense? Mm. It's kind of like a trick question, I would say, because everybody has different triggers. You know, some people's like favorite ASMR creators are just somebody with Apple headphones, like doing it with their iPhone in a mm. dim room, you know? So it really depends on who's watching and like what you're looking for. Now, there are a lot of ASMR artists out there who do a variety of different things, talking videos, no talking videos, hands only videos, animated videos. In fact, there are currently over 13 million ASMR videos on YouTube of people trying different things, as it seems pretty much any sound can be a trigger as long as it's soft, slow, and repetitive. I think Supreme makes good sounds. 
Now, as for the triggers we're going to do, I'm probably going to lean towards sounds that I like personally. I don't like a lot of super intense like mouth sounds mm -hmm. or like licking, mm -hmm. like that stuff I'm not super into. Hair cutting is okay. Scalp massaging is okay. I love hair brushing. Okay. Finger fluttering, I'm down with, but I really like sort of like slower sounds, mm -hmm. like where it's like kind of like this kind of sound I like sounds. a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Paper sounds, like book sounds are good. Mm -hmm. I sort of think of it like it's definitely like dry sounds versus wet sounds. Like you mm. definitely prefer dry sounds. Dry sounds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's so polarizing. People will like the eating sounds, like licking or anything. Like people are very like against or for. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I'm, I think I'm dry. Mm. I think I'm dry. Next, we have to figure out how to present the triggers. Now, even though there are a ton of different ASMR videos, I would say that most of them fall into three rough buckets. First off, you have just like a straight up trigger compilation with no conceit, like a 10 triggers to help you fall asleep or a tapping on 10 different items sort of thing. The second bucket contains videos that have a little more artifice. The ASMR artist sets up a specific scenario or activity that contains tingly or or triggering instances, like doing a makeup collection or haul, coloring in a coloring book, or giving someone a head massage. An organic yet unintentional example of this is Bob Ross's painting tutorials, where all he's doing is painting on a canvas on screen, but it has all the ingredients to trigger ASMR, good brush sounds, relaxing visuals, and a chilled out presence. Something like so. The third and final bucket is what I would call an immersive story or role play, where the ASM artist sets up a scenario where they can perform actions on the camera as if it were you, the viewer, like giving you a spa treatment or giving you a haircut. I personally like role plays. Mm -hmm. That's why I think I tend to do more of that. Like mm -hmm. I do what I like most of the time. This category also often includes the ASM artist pretending to be a different character. Coincidentally, people love to do role plays as Bob Ross, sometimes where you are the canvas. Now I think that bucket number one is probably the best one to try and make as a beginner, but I am interested in trying out a role play segment because they seem kind of fun and people can get pretty creative with them. I've previously mentioned one of my favorites, the 1300s AD, you have the plague, none role play. No, it's okay, I can drink holy water, I'm a nun. Those ones are hard to put in the background though because there's a lot happening. <laughs> like there's a lot going on. Yeah. You're like, what is that noise? And it's like a rosary, she's like swinging around. <laughs> You're like, why is this happening? Oh, are you falling asleep? Oh, I think we got a corpse on our hands. So after learning a little bit about how we could present our triggers, I wanted to know a bit more about the movie magic that goes into filming ASMR. I think that with some ASMR videos, you can mostly tell how they're produced and you can see how the person is making the sounds. But with other videos, it's not quite as clear, especially with role play videos where things are kind of happening around the camera. Like, do you ever like put things on your camera, like wigs or googly eyes? I don't know, anything like <laughs> something, to, something that would both help you, but also maybe like simulate the sound for the audience. Yeah, I've done that before. Whenever, if you're doing like a, any sort of hair brushing or hair cutting, like I will stick a wig on the camera, you know, like <laughs> because it's right, because you, you're correct. Like you have to look in the camera like you're talking to the camera. Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. You're talking to me. I remember doing like a dentist role play and I sort of like messed up in doing the mouth like around the top and bottom of the lens and people are like, you're cleaning my eyes, <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, in terms of audio, GB mentioned that she usually just tries to make most of the sounds naturally from their source, but there are some hacks that she's found. When I do head massage videos now, I have a wig inside of a mesh bag. It gives more of an intense scratching sound than just touching like a wig on top of a camera mic. For like any sort of skin, I will either use like this leather, uh, sort of like jug that I have. It's just a like, leather jug? I'll show you. <laughs> I brought it. <laughs> Rags work really well for skin. When I did uh, a shaving role play, I was doing a razor with like shaving cream on a rag and just sort of like on the rag, you know? So you, you, you kind of 
test things out before you start filming. What about like wet stuff? Like when you're trying to simulate like washing a face? It's kind of experimental. I've definitely a lot of time just put my hand like up near the camera and like wiped it on my hand. But like you have to sort of like make sure that your shoulder is down just so it looks okay like yeah. to the viewer. Cause you don't want to put like a wet towel like no. on the camera. No. No, that's bad. Cause I've done that before. It was not great. I've sprayed cameras. I've sprayed mics. I've ruined two. You've ruined two I've mics. I've ruined two mics. How? I wanted a more intense spraying sound. <laughs> so Straight down the middle. I really just <laughs> went for it. And then the next day my mic didn't work and I was like, mm. Makes sense. That was probably my fault. <laughs> so I think the answer for us for now is probably to leave the water alone. I am going for drier sounds anyway. All right. So with that, um, let's set up. Now, GB had brought a bunch of equipment for us to use so we could simulate her setup that she has at home. She usually films standing up with like a table of props next to her, but she uses a variety of microphones depending on what she's filming. So we have the 3DO, which is the ears that you see right there. Yes. He's got attached earlobes, which I believe is a recessive trait. I don't know if that's relevant to anyone out there. It's, it is interesting actually. It's science. Though. And then we have that guy down there, which is the blue Yeti. Yeah. And then these guys are like the road mics, the ones I'm subtly groping. GB brought the mother load on this one. Yeah. Yeah, she's I wanted to give you options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for my first go, I wasn't quite ready for the ears, but I wanted to use something more advanced than the Yeti. So we went with the two standing road mics. <laughs> GB also brought us a suitcase full of ASMR props, as well as costume pieces she uses for role plays. Do I look good as an elf? You kind of work through your haircut. It really suits you. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I decided not to go with the elf vibe, but I did pick out a few of GB's props to tap on, as well as some of my own props from our old videos that seemed like they had ASMR potential. Maybe the demon pants would be good? Because you know, you, you want a paper, it's basically like rubbing paper together. It is actually. To top it off, GB also gave me an old choppable wig for a little role play segment. You can go to town on this. <laughs> this is trash wig. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we were ready to go. Okay. So welcome to the ASMR portion of this video. If you're not into ASMR, you can now not watch and I won't be offended. But if you're only here for the ASMR, Welcome. Was that too close? I'm sorry. So we have like a decent amount of triggers that GB has brought for us that are like common triggers that ASMR channels use. Um, so I'm gonna start with some of those. And then I'm gonna go for um, some triggers that you may remember if you've watched any of our other videos. Okay, I'm going to begin with the brushes. I've got a short and stout brush and a sort of like long and skinny brush. It's kind of like a Timon and Pumba situation. Maybe I can uh, brush the top like this.
it smells kind of good. It smells like wood.
has been living in our downstairs for a full year. <laughs> and I say living because I don't know what she does at night. Now, she is covered in fabric and also a mini wig, but I thought that her um, roller skates would be an interesting trigger. This is like the kind of sound that I really like. Kind of like pencil on paper sound. Okay, I'm gonna open it now. Alright, so um, I'm going to scrape it with my eyeshadow scalpel. Just a little. Here, I'm gonna hold it like a violin. Like right under my chin.